Hi, uh, I wanted to show something I've been working on for the last couple of days. Uh, it, it's uh, really early, but I think it's looking rather promising. Um, it's procedural terrain streaming, or at least semi-procedural terrain streaming. Um, you'll see as I start moving in any particular direction that uh, new terrain will be added in the background. and. Uh, Right now the draw distance isn't very high, but I, uh, I'm experimenting with the um, level of detail for the terrain, so that further away sections are, though they are larger by a factor of two or three, they use the same height map and splat map resolution. Uh, and with that, I think I can get up to draw distances around uh, 100 kilometers, which would be, which would be great, actually. Uh, this, um, this is semi-procedural, and by that I mean that um, some of the content is created beforehand uh, with a tool like World Machine, but the way it is used is, is very procedural. It's not like you use World Machine to generate an entire island and then you just stream in the entire island. Uh, what this does is it, um, it loads in brushes, kind of like brushes that you'd use in Photoshop, and then it procedurally stamps them across the world, and it just adds and blends them together. So with that, you can um, use external tools like World Machine or, uh, or custom uh, modeling tools like, I don't know, Blender or ZBrush, uh, and you can create uh, really high quality content brushes with it. Incidentally, I haven't done that yet. These are just some ugly uh, test brushes, but you get the idea. Um, you can create them, load them in, and uh, this system will just splat them around uh, to create endless variety. And this goes on for quite a while. Uh, I haven't actually calculated how far along this goes, but you know the precision is kind of high. And um, the streaming system also makes sure that um, that the player, or the camera in this case, and all the terrain that uh, they're they stay near the origin of the scene, so floating point precision doesn't really drop off. Um, that's based on what I did for the Aurora Wager, uh, by the way. Uh, but this is building on top of that a little bit. So, where to next for this? I really want to use this um, right away in both Full Aurora Sport and the Aurora Wager, because uh, it's perfect for it. Um, there's also, um, in what is it, a week or two, um, the Roguelike Jam for this year. The Seven Day Roguelike event is coming up. Uh, I might use it for that. Although, to be fair, we might just work on the Aurora Wager a bit more during that. Um, as far as features for this go, um, one thing, of course, is the level of detail system, so we can have higher draw distances at uh, with gentler performance. And um, we need more variation in this. Uh, this is only using, I think, two or three brush uh, sets, so this is uh, three 256 by 256 height maps and splat maps. It's not a lot. Um, I need to make sure that you can use um, more splat prototypes, so, so more textures for the terrain, like grass and sand and rock. We want more variation in that. Uh, I need to be able to scale the brushes up and down, so you can have really tiny ones and really big ones. Really big ones for the base layer of the terrain, and really small ones for uh, for little details everywhere. Uh, I certainly need better uh, splat map equalization, because right now you can see, even though the... You can kind of see the rock texture poking through here, but it's blended in with all the sand. Uh, so the rock here really needs to be prioritized, and it's not doing that right now. But I'll fix that. Uh, I guess that's it. Um, finally, I guess I have to apologize for not making uh, many videos or, or many posts or anything. Uh, I'm back on the job. Uh, expect to see a little more content, and uh, glad to still have you with us. Alright, goodbye. Until next time.